Uh, my name is Mark Hudon. I'm uh, 59 years old. I first climbed here in 1974 when I was 18. Um, I moved out west after that, and I've been out west climbing here since, off and on since then. Uh, lately, in 2009, I started getting back into big wall climbing, and I climbed the nose in a day, and the next year I soloed El Cap, and since then I've been doing two and three El Cap walls a year. It's pretty wild. We're not, we're not curing, you know, we're not solving world hunger or anything. We're just doing this thing. Um, but it's just for some reason, I don't know, placing those pins, placing the cams, moving up, hauling, climbing some thin little crack. Uh, you know, no matter how many times the route's been done, it's still like you haven't done it that many times. It's still an accomplishment for yourself. Um, I don't know. I just love it. I love every part of it. I love the Paragons flying around. I love the Swifts. Uh, I love setting up my portal edge. I love watching the stars come out at night and move through the sky. I love watching the cars down here drive around. Um, I mean, I love watching the other climbers on the cliff. It's, um, and just, it just, it's sort of an encapsulated experience in your life. Uh, it's just, it's got a real definite start and a real finish and a real sort of theme to it that you can just, it's really, um, really encapsulated, I guess. I mean, this is all it is. When you go up on El Cap, we used to call going up on El Cap sort of like being in prison. There's only so many things you can do. You know, you only have so much water, you only have so much food, only, you can only go so many places. And so, once you serve your time and do the thing, that's just a really unique part of your life. I'm, I'm really, really selfish when I climb El Cap. Uh, there's, only, there's only so many El Cap routes in my life. Uh, and if you're... I've climbed El Cap with three people. It tends to be a little bit clustery, but I don't like it because I end up giving away a third of the climb. I don't lead those pitches. I just clean them. I don't see them. I, you know, it's not. It's just sort of not part of the climb for me. Uh, no doubt, as I get older, maybe I'll want to do party walls. You know, with three people and just have a great old time up there. Um, I'm getting to the point now that I might start repeating some of the routes that I've done in the distant past. Uh, but those will be party walls. Those won't be my, my serious walls. Uh, things like, like Tempest and Reticent, uh, the big aid walls. I go with a buddy that I'm just really in tune with and we're just really working together there as a team to get at the thing. So, he leads a pitch, I encourage him, I clean the pitch, I lead a pitch, he encourages me. So we're, we're really the team. Um, everyone has their glory moments, but everyone definitely, you know, every, I've done the stick of the day enough times, and I've done the walk of shame enough times, and you know, that's the way it is. It's sort of like life. Yeah. Well, um, the first, the hardest part is getting all that crap to the base, getting it off the ground, getting things organized. By the time you're into day two, uh, you've spent some time with your partner, you've streamlined a little bit of things, and now you're on the route. So now all you have to do is just go climb. So you wake up in the morning, make coffee, have breakfast, look at the topo, get the rack together, and there isn't anything hard about day two. Day two is probably the most... There's only so many El Cap pitches in your life, and I want them all. I want to lead them all, I want to clean them all, I want to be there on all of them. I would be having my own coffee that I roast at, Hood River Coffee Roasters. Um, it's, that's one of the things that got me back into climbing was now that we had comfortable sleeping bags, portal edges, we had stoves that you could haul up there, we could now have good warm food breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, now we can brew coffee. So I've always had, I've always had coffee for myself. I was always buffed out my partners with coffee. Um, there was a time recently where I was searching around through my bags and I, and I thought that I had actually forgotten the coffee and I really didn't know what I was gonna do. 
Uh, but I didn't. I had coffee in there. So, yeah, coffee to me is a big, important part of the whole thing. You know, the, the scene, I don't know. All you got to do is be friendly. And that's all there is to it. I mean, everyone over there is friendly. No one's, no one's a badass. No one, everyone's failed on El Cap. Um, everyone has their glory moments, but everyone definitely, you know, every, I've done the stick of the day enough times, and I've done the walk of shame enough times, and, you know, that's the way it is. It's sort of like life. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, definitely it's a big old family. I mean, everyone... You know, I mean, guys are always dropping off bags of chips and beers, and the monkeys just break right into it. They're gone in seconds, you know, but it's just we, we are a family. We are, we do care about each other. I mean, if someone's going to go up there and they look all squirrely and they're, they're talking a big game and somebody doesn't really think that they know what they're doing, you know, you'd sit them down and you might go, hey, all right, you understand that when you get here, you got to do this or getting down is going to be you're, you're going to be calling for a rescue so you know we take care of people um, like I said with my hauling system people are always coming up to me and asking me about that and I give them my tips and, and just help them I want and everybody on the, on the on the bridge wants people to succeed on their route you know there's no there's no ego that I did it and you didn't do it. You know, it's not. It's not. I'm better than you. It's we're all out here having fun, and so I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. Check out this hall system. You need some cams. I'll loan you some cams. Go get these totem cams. Forget this. Forget that. You know, blah 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 blah. Buff them out so that they have a good time. I'm an old guy, <laughs> you know, um, and I've done it. And I've done it well, I think. Um, I, you know, and, and, and I've never told anyone that I'm a better climber than them, that, I have, that I'm stronger than them. I just have more desire than most people. So I try to instill into the, the climbers at the bridge that if they want to do it, if they want to suffer, and they're willing to do that, they want to think about it, and they want to figure it out that they can do it because they're nobody is any better than them I'm not any better than anyone else I just want it and so you have to want it you have to be able to go up there and suffer figure it out and get it done so you know, people I mean I've, I've got my the hauling uh, video out there so I mean every single season I'm down here somebody will come up to me and say hey are these good pulleys or 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 we did the route you know some guy just donated to my to my tips page because he they had gone up on uh, lurking fear and they had done it because a couple of my tips really saved them a bunch of hours uh, separating the being able to separate the haul bags and, and the hauling system you know and they just said hey man we talked about you a lot and we really want to thank you for doing you know helping us do that route which, you know, that's, like you said, we're not curing cancer. We're right. all out here trying to have fun right. and trying to climb El Cap. Yeah, they've been there. I mean, it's, it's hard not to have the same feeling. They all understand being on some hook and being freaked out and searching for some cam or something that they don't know they have and inching up on it and it holding and, you know, solving that puzzle of getting all the way up El Cap. And, you know, it can be freaky it can be scary you think you might die um, but, and then solving that puzzle and getting getting over it you know figuring it out calling up that courage that you need to do it and you know stepping on that hook stepping on that cam behind the flake moving up finally clipping the anchors going yay man you know I mean it's it's pretty nice settling onto the anchor and let your buddy go on the next pitch you know, it's it's nice, and so we've all been there. We've all experienced, you know, pretty much the same thing. And so you can really relate to the next guy. We we're at the base of the um, of the ropes. We were wrapping off uh, off of uh, off of Freerider because of extended rain. And so we got to the ground, and there were these guys that were going up on Freerider. And so they said, "Well, what's the monster crack like?" I mean, blah blah blah. And so you know, we're exchanging beta, and the guy's ready to start jumaring away, and he goes, "Well." How about, a, I mean, we only have one six. Do we need more than one six? I said, oh yeah, you need two sixes. 
And uh, he goes, oh man, oh bummer, we only have one six. And so I just, I didn't even know this guy. So I dug in my haul bag and I gave him a six. I mean, I don't know what six costs, it's 120 bucks or something, but I just knew that I was gonna get it back. I said, hey, you can find me at the bridge. Just leave it at the bridge. Just tell it, tell, you know, you know me, my name, you know my name, leave it at the bridge, I'll get it, don't worry about it. And sure enough, I got it, I got a six pack of cookies, I got a bunch of beer, you know. I mean, there was no way in the world that guy was gonna rip off my six. I didn't even know this guy. So, and that's, that's sort of the way it works, and it's sort of the way I really enjoy. Yeah, because they're all, they're all moving through their life. You know, we, we're here in the spring and fall climbing, you know, the optimum climbing season. They've got their goals. They get up the route, you talk to them, say hi, see how they're doing. And then, you know, uh, there's a couple guys that the only time I've ever seen them in their lives over the last five years has been right here on the bridge. I, mean, I don't even know where they live but I see them on the bridge every single time. And I know who they are, and you know, I sort of know what they've been doing, maybe keep track of them on Facebook and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's like you walk up, hey man, you're you know good to see you, what are you gonna do this year? Oh, I'm gonna do Nose in a Day, or I'm gonna do Reticent, or I'm gonna solo this. And, you know, we all sort of understand that a little bit, so we all understand what the guy is going through, you know. Can I do the Nose in a Day? Can I hang it on? reticent for that long you know do I have it in me to solo an El Cap route so we can all sort of relate to different parts of it to go up there with them you know so I get to I get to do the route more times they come back and they're all so excited and I get to say oh I helped you know in my little way big way big way